together through Zoom, we can be together through Facebook. Um, and so this morning, what I wanna do is talk to you guys about the 20 lessons I've learned from 2020. Um, there's probably 120, but we only have 30 minutes. <laughs> so I've come up with what I feel are, are my top 20. Uh, and I've, I've seen in the last few days, many people starting to come up with this topic, 20 lessons from 2020. And it's interesting, I was reading a couple of blogs yesterday and um, it was interesting to see some people taking a positive approach and some people taking a negative approach. I'm sure you know by now that at Mo in Mojo, yes, we're gonna be real, but we're gonna be positive uh, because it's a choice, right? We can choose to look at things um, with, with any lens you want. Uh, but I think the, the, important, the important question to ask yourself is, what, what is the result or outcome from the way I look at something? And so one of the um, things we're gonna talk about on my list is perspective. So if you'd like to join me uh, in this conversation and really get something uh, significant out of it, I'm gonna invite you to take notes and write some things down. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments either on Facebook or here on Zoom, um, but here we go. So number one, first lesson I, I wrote down is everything matters. Everything matters. That really came clear to me more so in 2020 um, because I believe that there is this law of attraction. So I believe that whatever we put out into the world comes back to us. So everything I think, everything I say, and everything I do really matters. And it has, it has a consequence, positive or negative. It, ha it can create a ripple effect. Um, the way I choose to show up in a room with my energy matters, right? And so when we had a year full of so many challenges and obstacles, and for many people, even some hardships, I think that everything matters. And the way that we go through life is, is important. So number two, our feelings provide insight. And I've talked a lot about emotions and feelings in the last several months. And I just want to remind everyone that to be human is to feel and, and to be human is to have emotions. Um, and those emotions can range from high to low, from positive to negative. And it is not for us to judge our emotions. It is for us to try to understand our emotions. What are our emotions trying to tell us? right? So the good emotions or positive emotions, right, might be a way to check in with ourselves to say, whatever we're doing, right, we're on track, right? We're in the right place. And when we're not feeling so positive, when we have negative emotions, uh, that's telling us something too, right? It might be telling us that we're not in the right spot. It might be telling us that what we're doing is not serving us. It might be, you know, sometimes fear is just a wake up call for something else, right? For us to understand that where we are at that moment in time is not the right place for us. So it could be in your physical environment. It could be in your career, it could be in a relationship. So I believe that our emotions are our inner GPS. And I believe that in this past year that really came clear, right? So our feelings provide insight. Number three, the lesson uh, that I wrote down for number three is patience. Um, and that's, that's not always an easy lesson, right? And we know we've heard probably since we were kids about you know patience and patience is a virtue, but it, it came really clear this year that that is true, uh, that we do not know how things will change we are not always in control of everything around us. And so uh, we have to be patient. We have to be patient with the way things sometimes roll out, with timelines. Uh, and I think that we have to recognize that impatience can lead to a lot of other negative emotions or feelings. So um, when we can be in a, in a controlled state of patience, uh, it just means that we are accepting certain things around us and we're taking the time to not, again, let our emotions take over, right? Because even though our emotions provide insight, we have to be in control of our emotions, not let our emotions take over and, and create this uh, sometimes runaway train. So number four that I wrote down is perspective. And again, you know, we can choose to look at things in a different way. 
Um, the same person can look at the situation two or three different ways and feel two or three different ways, uh, maybe even a dozen different ways. Um, you may look at a situation and have one perspective and I may look at a situation of another. If you decide that whatever is happening around you is a problem, then it will be and you will find every problem and every negative outcome that you could possibly think to associate with it. Yet if your perspective is to filter through and process what's happening and to, to understand what's in your control and what's not in your control, then the way that you look at something suddenly changes, right? So our perspective is so important because some people can really reflect right now on December 28th uh, as I've tried to, right? I could sit down and write a list of 20 negative things that I learned in 2020. I could probably come up with 220 things. Yet I choose to focus on the lessons that I've learned that are positive, that are life-changing, that may be more affirming than all the negative stuff, right? So that's what perspective does. It gives you an opportunity to choose what you look at and how you look at it so that you can choose how you respond and how you understand and process it. So I think perspective became a really important lesson in 2020. Number five, we never know what lies ahead. One year ago today, we all, whether it was in a formal sit down with paper and pen or just started having some thoughts or visions, we all had a concept of what 2020 was going to be like. And around March 14th, it all started changing. And so I know that that lesson is something that I, I was reminded of is that we really never know what lies ahead and uh, life is unpredictable, right? And so we have to be clear about who we are in this world. We have to be clear about where we are rooted in our faith and where we are, uh, where, where we come into any situation with the tools and the knowledge and the ability that we have, that is what I know I can bet on. So when life starts changing around me, I have to be clear at my core as to what I bring to the party. Um, so number six, you don't have to know or understand the plan to really believe that there's purpose in it countless stories from the beginning of time about what someone set out to do and what it actually became, right, was not the plan. And so we have to believe that whatever the plan is, that we may not always be in control, and yet there is purpose in every in everything that's going on, right? And so we don't have to know necessarily what that purpose is. We just have to believe that it's happening for, re for a reason, right? And that we will find the purpose along the way. Okay, number seven. Now, this is in no importance of order. It's just what started coming to me. Um, but I believe a lesson that we can all say we've learned in 2020 is health is, is everything, right? Health is everything. Um, we have seen people suffering from COVID-19 um, directly and indirectly. And, you know, while we do know that there may be some health risks, right, there are some people who are in a uh, more uh, risk category for COVID, um, you know, it's, it's really health is everything. So um, I have a new perspective on that around maintaining my, my immune, my immunity, my immune health, my physical health, emotional health, right? Because if, if our health is not in a good place, we are not at the full capacity to fight off anything, right? So even mental health, right? If our emotional and mental health is not where it should be, then we are not equipped to always fight off some of these things happening around us. So I think health is everything. So in 2021, you know, what are, what are the plans for just staying in good health or improving our health, getting more physical activity, getting to the doctor more often, vitamins, whatever it means for you. But I believe we can all agree that health is everything. Number eight, we've talked about this on Mojo a few times. Life is figure outable. Uh, Maria Forleo penned that quote. So life is figure outable. That means that even though we may not know what's coming down the road, even though we, um, 
you know, are going to be faced with challenges that might be painful or difficult. Uh, we have to believe that we have what it takes to figure it out. Even if it means we have to learn a new skill or we have to talk to someone else who can show us the way, we can figure it out. And I think every one of us can believe that today because we've gotten through this year and we've had to figure out a lot of stuff along the way. And we did and we figured it out. So life is figure outable. Okay, number nine, change is inevitable. If we're not changing, we're dying. Life is about changing. Look around you, everything is changing. The grass changes, the leaves change, your hair changes, everything changes. Uh, people come and go in our lives, in politics and government, uh, seasons change, we grow. Change is inevitable. And yes, 2020 had a lot of change. I think that when we can stand in acceptance of change, even though at the moment change might be, again, difficult or at times overwhelming, it's just understanding that change is always going to happen around us, right? So we have to accept that change is inevitable. Number 10, the people you love are everything. Whether those are family members, friends, the people who are important to you, and it doesn't matter if the list is short or long, but whoever is in your heart as a loved one, they are everything. So show them that you love them, tell them that you love them, provide them with that space of gratitude and grace because change is inevitable. We don't know what may happen. And I think that we only have our, our moments today. And so whoever is significant to you, whoever means something to you, tell them. Number 11, your home is your haven. We have all spent a lot of time in our homes this year, more than probably, I mean, for me, I have been more homebound than I think I've ever been in my life. Uh, I've always been a very busy person on the go. And um, it's, I love you too. I just got an I love you message. I love you too. And our home is, it's our haven. And now, especially in 2020, I did little things to just make my home more special to me. You know, whether it's putting the little Christmas tree in my office, because I sit in here, you know, most days. Um, if it's, if it's moving furniture around, if it's, if it's, you know, whatever it is, I don't care. Aesthetically, make it comfortable, make it supportive. Um, because we have spending, we're spending more time at home. And I think that we are connecting more to our home in a way. So make it comfortable, but make it you, you know, uh, I remember years ago, Oprah talking about this and she said, your home should rise up and meet you and welcome you when you walk in the door. And I, I, I love that. So I think that your home is your haven. So make it what it needs to be, make it that sacred, comfortable space. And make it a place where you feel like that is your retreat in the world. Number 12, lesson that I've learned in 2020, you can get along really, really well with less. You can get along well with less. Um, I've traveled less. I've shopped less. I've socialized a little less. I've eaten out less. You know, all the things I thought were so important, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> So you can get along really well with less. And I think sometimes you find when that stuff comes down, then you will find other things become more abundant, right? Like I value uh, sitting around with my husband playing cards, right? I mean, little things become more important. So you can get along well with less. Okay, number 13. I think this one's a, a big one. You can have fear or faith, but you cannot have both. You cannot truly be a person of faith if you're walking around fearful all the time. And you have to decide where your faith is rooted. I know where mine is rooted. You have to decide where yours is rooted. But at the end of the day, if you're fearful, then you're really not confident and you're really not in faith. So you can decide it's fear or faith, but you cannot have both. And so I think 2020 has shown us that on some days we're feeling more faith than we are fear and vice versa. And yet you are in control of your emotions. So you get to decide, am I going to feel that fear or am I going to let that fear tell me what it needs to tell me 
and then really turn it into something more faithful and stand on some solid ground. So you can have fear or faith, but you cannot have both. Number 14, my, le my lesson from 2020, my desire to travel and see this world is stronger than ever. So I love to travel and I'm very blessed to have the opportunities to do that. And my wings got clipped this year, <laughs> like a lot of us, right? I had a really amazing, actually two amazing trips planned this year and they couldn't happen. Um, so I think that 2020 has shown me, you know, I always think I have plenty of time to do things and change is inevitable. We don't know what's coming down the pike. Uh, I have no idea, right? What if, what if we experience another situation like this, God, God forbid, another pandemic, and, you know, I have to stay home again. So I think it just makes me realize, like, I want to, wherever I want to go, whatever I want to see and experience, I want to get clear about it. And I want to make a plan to get there and not always say one day, one day, one day. And I think that that's an opportunity for all of us, right? So it doesn't have to be a trip to India. It could be something, you know, in, it's a place you want to go in this country. It could be something you want to do in your own town. Whatever is in your heart, whatever, you know, you, you have a desire to see and experience, go do it. Go do it when you have the opportunity because you don't know how much time you might have to do anything, right? And so, again, this year showed me that um, my desire to travel is, is really important to me. I love experiences and I love sharing that with other people, but it's also, I really have a desire to see some things in this world. And I wanna do that whenever the opportunity presents itself. Number 15, challenges are life lessons. Challenges are life lessons. And you know, my friends, no one promised you life would be without its challenge. And I believe that we are, are here to learn. That's what I think. I think that we are put on this earth to learn. And those lessons are important for us because it is how we grow. And so challenges are here to teach us something. And if, if you go through any kind of challenge, strife, tragedy, conflict, and you can't walk away from it or get to the other side of it and look back and say, here's what I learned, then I I'm, I'm feel that what you went through was really fruitless, right? There's no meaning. And so I, I, I know that there are some things that can happen in, in our lives and all of us can, can share stories of things that were really hard, really painful, yet there's a lesson in it if you allow yourself to see it and feel it and learn from it. And so I think that in 2020, we have to get clear about what the lessons were. And I think that until we learn those lessons, sometimes we are where the universe doesn't give us the opportunity to move on, right? So it's just like being in school, right? Until you pass the test to, to some level, you may not graduate, you may not get to the next grade. And so I believe that challenges are life lessons and that we're here to learn and we're here to use that knowledge now to create a better opportunity for ourselves and other people, right? So whatever you learn, how will you take that and apply it and make it better? How will you come out a better person? How will you then use that to improve the world around you and to support people around you? Um, because without having that, uh, it could seem pointless. And that's, that would be the tragedy more than the event itself is if you were unchanged by it, right? So I believe that challenges are life lessons and no one can do it for you. That was the other thing I just saw that I wrote in my notes. You know, you, you can't pay someone else to do setups for you. <laughs> it doesn't work. You have to do your own setups, right? So that's how it works in, in terms of challenges and in, in, in life. Okay, number 16, our brain cannot always be trusted. Your mind is a scary place and I don't recommend you go there alone too often. I think in 2020, we've all found ourselves at one point or another overthinking, over processing. And that can lead to a lot of things, right? So I think that we have to realize that our thoughts can be changed by our emotions, 
our thoughts can be changed at any moment in time. So we have to be aware of what our mind is really focused on because our brain can really start to overthink and get carried away. So you can't always trust your own, your own thoughts. Number 17, we need boundaries. 2020 showed me we needed boundaries. Uh, and there were so many things going on in this world to show us we needed boundaries, right? From physical boundaries, emotional boundaries. Um, there were certain conversations I had to say to people, I'm not getting involved in that conversation, whether it was political or whatever, right? So we, I believe boundaries are healthy. And I believe that boundaries, boundaries are not meant to keep people away. Boundaries are meant to show people the way. I'm going to say that again. Boundaries are not meant to keep people away. They are, they are to show people the way. So in other words, a lot of people stress out about creating boundaries around themselves because they think that it's being, you know, mean or we're, we're putting people off and we're keeping people back. And that's not the case. It's not meant to keep you away. The boundaries I set are meant to show you how to treat me. And boundaries are to show me how I want to be treated, right? So I believe that boundaries are healthy. Okay, they show people the way to treat you, to love you, to support you, to communicate with you, to spend time with you, right? And boundaries are healthy. Boundaries are necessary to keep things in balance, whether it's a relationship, whether it's an event, whether it's a, which in 2020, it taught us health, right? Boundaries are meant to keep things in perspective and to keep things in balance. So boundaries are really healthy. Number 18, life is full of choices. We saw a lot of that in 2020. Life is full of choices, right? From how you choose to respond to things, how you choose to live your life, lead your business, set your boundaries, whatever. And the thing that I want to say about it is it's not always about right or wrong. Choices are just decisions that we make. The key is, can you, can you really put some thought into making the right choice for you? with a lot of the things that we've just talked about here. Um, and so then it's about also having compassion, respect, and understanding other people's choices and the boundaries that they set and not judging those choices through our own filter, right? And not saying that it's right or it's wrong. It's just a choice, okay? Number 19, everything that matters is happening inside of us, not outside of us. Everything that truly matters is happening right in here, not out there. And there could be a lot of crazy stuff happening out there, but all that matters is what's happening in here and in here. Enough said on that one. Number 20, awareness is a gift. 2020 opened my eyes to a lot of things, as I'm sure it did for you as well. And the greatest gift you can have is awareness. Because once you know something, you can't unknow it, even if you try. Once you learn something, you really can't unlearn it unless you choose to ignore it, right? But at the end of the day, awareness is your greatest gift because once you know something, now you get to decide what to do about it. It comes back to a lot of all the other things we put on the list, choice, perspective, right? But it starts with awareness. So what has this past year really opened your eyes to? What have you learned? What is important to you? What do you know today that you will carry forward now into everything that you do? What do you know today that you didn't know a year ago? So I believe, always believe that awareness is a gift. It's your first opportunity, right? So once you know something, you get to decide, well, what, what do I do with that? 
So that's my list of 20 things I've taken from 2020. Uh, as I said, I could probably have created a longer list, but it, it sounds too good to say, you know, 20 lessons in 2020. Um, and I see that many of you have some, some thoughts in the chat and uh, uh, yeah, awareness is definitely everything. So um, is there anyone who has anything that they would like to say before we get on to the rest of our day? I always like to give you guys an opportunity. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Good morning. Good morning. I had a, uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I was uh, um, taking notes as I usually do. And um, the number three, patience, yeah. and then impatience. Um, I was just wondering about your thoughts on timing. You know, it's easy to be impatient. And if you don't pace yourself, you find yourself overwhelmed with impatience. <laughs> Is there any thoughts or inspirations on that topic in terms of the pace no. by which you embrace it? I think it, it just comes back to a few things we've talked about here around feelings and emotions is awareness, right? You have to recognize you're feeling it, right? So number one, when you feel that that you're being impatient, it's it's to take that little time out to say, okay, what, what's going on here? What's really going on? Because a lot of times the things that you think you're impatient about are really just triggering something. And so your, your sense of being, you know, impatient could be the trigger to something deeper, some other anxiety. So I would say that, you know, the first step is just to recognize you're feeling it and to ask yourself, where is it coming from? And then, you know, could you respond differently? You know, it, I think that it's taking that time out and that, that is the hardest part for a lot of us until we really raise our level of consciousness it's to understand that you're feeling it in the first place and want to do something about it. Um, and that, that would be where I would start. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, there is a, I mean, these all resonated with me, honestly, but there was three that really stuck out for me. One, one happened to be patience as well. Um, not working this year has really put me in a different place coming from someone who commuted four plus hours a day and worked a million hours a week and and yeah it's kind of a strange place to be and so taking it you know taking a step back and a deep breath and recognizing this happened for a reason and and you know it, it it's pretty interesting and it, that was a huge lesson to learn even just how to sit still for a while is hard to do, which kind of ties into your home is your haven. I've never spent as much time home or cooked as many dinners in my entire life, but you know, I have a different appreciation for it. It's family time that I've literally never had before. And you know, you don't know what you're missing, right? If you've never experienced yep. it before. So it's been pretty amazing. You know, something as simple as I was saying to Chris last night, we've never had this before. We're just sitting here watching TV on a Sunday night and relaxing and not thinking about, oh my God, I got to get up tomorrow. Oh my God, I have to do this. Or it's really interesting. And yeah, then I, the last one was yeah. um, our brain cannot always be trusted. And this is something that ties back to one of your old sessions where, you know, for me, it's not letting one person dictate how I think about myself or about a certain situation. And, you know, your brain can do that too. If someone says or does something that mm -hmm. might make you think differently. Um, yeah. Our brain cannot always be trusted and we yeah. need to sometimes think things through before we come to a final determination on how we want to think or feel about something. Yeah, for sure. You know, a couple of things came to mind when you were talking and, and also, I guess, to piggyback on what Jill was saying about patience. I, you know, I think that it is about understanding too that we're just a part of a much bigger picture, right? So yes, what's happening to you, right, can be challenging, yet maybe it's happening for you. Yep. Right. The lessons that you can learn from that. And That's does it open up other doors? So, you know, if, if something in your life is, is like you're working on finding a job, let's say, is there something else that while you're doing that, you can also develop or grow or do, or put your time into, right. So that you can see that this time that you would be spending in, in a eight hour, 10 hour, 12 hour job with commuting on top of it, you know, how will you use the gift of time differently now, right? Mm -hmm. What are the opportunities you can create for yourself? 
And, um, and that goes back to perspective and how our, you know, thoughts are, are shaping our world. And, um, and, and, you know, when you said something about, you know, how other people might think of you, remember what other people think of you is just none of your business. It yep. really is. <laughs> yep. So Sarah, good morning. Oh, you're muted, Sarah. There we go. There, there we go. go. Um, <clears throat> yes, all of that resonated with me. And I want to share one of the things that my yoga teacher said to us when <clears throat> a couple months ago, when everybody was so overcooking, because we never realized how much we eat out, right? Yeah. <laughs> when you go, yeah, I'm not cooking tonight. Um, but she said, flip that around and think, I get to cook all of this delicious food. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's what we have, not what we lack. Absolutely. Beautifully said. It's not, it's not what you have to do. It's what you get to do. Yeah. Right. And so it's about looking for the blessings and everything and, and realizing, you know, whatever our challenges are, we're not alone. There, there, there are people, you know, we're all challenged by the events of this year in different ways, certainly, but we're all challenged by it. And so really, how will you grow because of it? How will you come out of this a better person, a better partner, a better business person, a better parent, a friend, whatever? And, and I think that's really the opportunity. That is really the opportunity. Robin, I see you have your hand up. Good morning. Oh, you're muted, Robin. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Um, I think one of the most powerful things that all the 20 things that you said is awareness. If we are not aware of what's around us, if we're not aware of what's in us, if we're not aware of what's happening, not only inside of us, which you brought, which is, is so true, everything that's happening um, is right in, within us, but we have to be aware. And I think uh, 2020 raised everyone's awareness um, socially, economically, you know, um, spiritually, um, awareness is everything. And um, I think 2020 was an extraordinary year, was an incredible year, was a fabulous year. Though we've yes. gone through a, a pandemic, but we are here. This That's is December right. 28th, 2020, and we are still here. We are still standing and awareness is wonderful. Amen, sister. <laughs> I love it. Yes, it is. Listen, you know, we can choose, right? It's all about choice again. We can choose to put our head in the sand on a lot of things, on a lot of topics, on a lot of what's happening around us. And while I am saying again that what is happening around you is really what's happening in here and in here, not out there. Uh, it's, it's about making the decision to be aware, to be awake, to be awake. That's another way of looking at it. awareness is awake and awakening, right? You can be a little asleep at the wheel or you can be totally awake. And I think that 2020 was a wake up call for us in a lot of ways and, and in many, many ways. And so now you have this opportunity to do something about what you've, what you've taken from this year, what you've learned from it. Um, you know, so I love that some of you have like a top three. So I'm going to be your coach right now. So if I was your coach, I would tell you, choose the three that resonate with you the most from this list. And if you want to create your own list, create your own list, but choose the top three lessons that you really want to do some work on, that you want to really draw down on, pull apart. And what will you do with that? learning with that understanding with that new knowledge how is that going to create a springboard into 2021 and the the goals that you're setting and the things that you want to learn and grow right i hope that you're all creating a personal growth plan so that you can choose something each month to focus on whether it be a book a class an experience whatever that will help you grow more in those really important areas of your life that, that relate back to the wheel of life, all these resources can be found on the Mojo Facebook page in the file section too, by the way. And so, you know, I create this personal growth plan every year so that I can see growth in my professional life, in my relationships, in my spirituality, in my health and wellness, in my finances, all those areas of our life that we know are really significant. 
And so um, maybe this is a good springboard into that. All right, so Sarah, do you have anything else to say or is that from before? That was from before, I'm sorry. No worries. Well, I just want to say uh, Happy New Year. Just a few days left to 2020. Celebrate all of the opportunities and all of the lessons and all of the challenges that were presented to you this year. Recognize that you're here. Recognize that you figured it out. Recognize that you are resilient, that you are strong, and that you are prepared for whatever lies ahead. And celebrate the fact that even though the calendar is flipping to a new month, it's really day by day. It's not about, you know, the, the new year. It's each day that you get up. How will you make today your best day? How will you live up to the greatness that you really were designed to have in this world? So I wish you all a happy, healthy new year. I will see you back here next Monday. Thank you for what you do to pour into me. And uh, I love all of you. And I'll see you next year. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, Anna. Thank you. Well. you. All Thanks right, everyone. Have there. a great day. All righty. Thanks, Anna. Bye. Bye, Bye, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>